Okay, so next part of this upgrade, this is how it's usually set up. You have this piece of plastic, then you have the glass in the normal set setup. What we're going to do is we're going to remove both of these, get rid of this etched plastic and etched glass with this ridiculous piece of removable plastic here that just gets thrashed as soon as you start using your machine. We're going to get rid of these all together. What we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of single strength glass to use a sacrificial glass and a piece of double strength glass. Uh, which you can use that one that you have there or you can just get a new one which is what I'm doing. Um, that can be, you can get that from any Home Depot or Lowe's, they'll cut it to fit for you. The sacrificial piece of glass will cost you four or five bucks so whenever you uh, want to replace that etched piece of glass you'll just be spending four or five bucks for a much cleaner look. So what we want to do here is we want to take the piece of plastic I've marked up on here to keep the same area so I have this lined up right. I want to set it underneath the piece of metal here and I want to try and get my best these holes do not line up at all and that's how they are in all the cabinets they have smaller screws so that they actually will fit in there so what I want to do is I want to find the best setup as far as how many of these holes I can get to line up and then go from there I've already done that on this by putting a, a 3 16 rivet in here and then just into each one of these and just lining it up figuring out okay well I know right now that I can only get three holes to line up perfectly or close to perfectly and it's the three that I marked here so I'll go ahead and put my rivets here so what I'm, I've done is you'll see black marks all the way around here if I was to take a file and file towards the black mark I'll get that hole as centered as possible and then when I go and drill for my rib nuts which will be stuck inside here when we're all done uh, that'll be the best possible scenario for, scenario for me and again, the idea is all these stay in here and they don't fall out. So I simply unscrew them, set this aside, pull out my piece of glass, put my new piece of glass, and get back to work. Okay, real quick, just going to show a quick change glass. Basically, you just unscrew all these little deals, take the black piece off here, the trim, and set off the side. You find my first piece of glass, which is my good piece of glass. Underneath that is my sacrificial glass, which you'll see is all blasted. So I'm just going to toss that. Okay, so I got my new piece of glass here. I'm going to set that in here. Got my old glass, take it down, I'm going to set this on top of the other one, and this does come with a little foot feet here to hold this glass up here, but they just barely fit on there, so keep your hand up there. We've got my little trim. Now I put these magnets here just to make sure they don't come off. I do this real quick. Not paying attention when I'm doing them. Just line up the holes. These are the rib nuts all the way around. So you just take these red deals here, line them up. On my previous video, I said that you could go to Home Depot and buy glass already cut. Well, it used to be able to. My Home Depot now is about the last two to three weeks ago. You can no longer, they will no longer cut the glass for you. So what I did on this last run here is I just bought a piece of 24 inch by 36 inch glass. What you need is 24 inch by 12 inch. And I just bought a little $10 glass cutter. And take the glass cutter and just cut it into three different pieces real easy. Piece of cake. I've never done it before, but I'm already going to describe and pop it. And then you wind up with three pieces of glass for 12 bucks. Bottom line. Anything else? Moving this around. Knock out these little pieces here. Nuts. So you can see how easy it is. 
rub them, apply some. Now you got a nice clean piece of glass. You don't have that plastic in here. It's a straight glass. That's all it takes to replace the actual glass in the pound. Much better than that piece of plastic that comes from all the three. Okay, real quick, I'm going to show you how good this thing works. It does not even compare to the sand, to the Harbor Freight sandblaster at all. Hopefully you can see this in the video. I can't really see it. I don't have a cameraman here. I'm on a tripod. So you see a rusty old horseshoe here. You'll see that this thing just knocks it right off. It's ridiculous how, how fast and efficient this thing is compared to the Harbor Freight one. Part of what makes this, again, I'm going to show how it's all set up here, but basically you've got a bottom feed instead of the top feed with the straw like you got on the Harbor Freight one. I'm hoping you can see what, how fast this is working here. But if you can see this nozzle in my hand, which I'll show it a little better in the video, uh, it's just a nozzle, it's not a trigger, not a gun, it's just a really high quality nozzle finding a big sandblaster. And real quick, I'm just going to show you how this looks. But I'm not going to get the whole thing, get the general idea. Turn off my shop back here real quick. So that's here, I guess. My light. Okay, just anyway, it does a great job. It doesn't even compare to the Harbor Freight deal. Harbor Freight deal is completely, completely uncomparable, just like it's a different cabinet, literally. So basically, what makes this thing tick, you can see you can drop, drop this down. Usually it was up here on the little shelf. You can see these flashings that go all the way around to keep the sand from getting in that edge there. Look down inside there, you can see how very little bit of sand I'm using. Basically two cups of sand, or actually that's uh, aluminum oxide, but it takes very, very little sand compared to what it took before. You can see my gloves are pretty hammered. I've got to replace those, but here's your nozzle. Now it's just a straight sandblast nozzle. But really what makes this thing tick, in my opinion, is you got a foot pedal now, and the foot pedal feeds from the bottom. So no longer do you have a straw sucking up to your gun. Now you have a gravity feed from the actual bottom of the cabinet into here, picks up. You have a regulator over here, and that's off pressure right there at 60, but you see I'm splashing at 40. And that's how well it works, it looks ridiculous at 40. You don't need 100 or 120 like I used to run my other one. Um, a couple other features, you can see the light kit in there. Well, it's kind of hard to see the light kit when I'm right in the eyes here. If you look up there, you can kind of see the light kit. Yeah, you can't. Two big floodlights up in the corner. Okay, again, that came from Tacoma blasting. You can see the flashings on the door to keep the sand from collecting on the door. You change your port to the back here for your, uh, I just hook up shop back to mine. You've got an outlet that you just hook up to your shop back. So when you turn on the switch for your light, automatically turns on. You can see there's a vent here. That comes with a kit too that allows you to actually change how much air is coming out. So you can, you know, you turn your vac on, you watch your hand, your hands, your gloves, I should say, uh, actually go out. As the gloves go out, you know, you can adjust your airflow by that. But you'll see there's another inside there. There's a different flashing on the side. It keeps the sand from going straight out that other uh, deal. If you're using, your, you actually relocate instead of using that for your, your dust collector, use the back one. And that one's where the vent is. But anyhow, again, this is a Tacoma, Tacoma blasting sand blast kit. I can't say enough good things about it. It actually completely transforms your Harbor Freight Sandblaster into a really, really good working machine. Hope this helps somebody.